You may be surprised to learn some famous people aren't where you think they are. In fact, we don't know where some of them are at all. Today we present three incredible people from history. Where in the world are their bodies? Let's dig into this. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the great composer, had returned to Vienna after a trip to Prague. He'd become sick during the trip, but was busy writing the Requiem, which he would never complete. On November 22nd, 1791, he was so ill he was put to bed, and on December 5th, 1791, he died. He was only 35 years old. Those who saw him before his death said his symptoms included a high fever, rash, and edema. It was reported that his body was so swollen he couldn't turn in his bed. The official cause of death was listed as rash and fever. Theories over the years included poisoning, rheumatic fever, syphilis, kidney failure, and food poisoning, among others. In 2009, scientists said they believe he died of a strep infection. We will never know for sure because his body is not in his graves. Yes, you heard me correct. Graves. There are two monuments to Mozart in two different cemeteries in Vienna. And since we now tend to believe where there's a marker, there's a grave. Well, it seems modern folks might believe Mozart has two. In 1791, burial customs in Vienna were much different than today. Gravestones generally were only used for the aristocracy. Mozart was buried in St. Mark's Cemetery in what was called a common grave. This meant a grave for a common man and not a mass grave or a pauper's grave as some reports have called it over the years. These common graves were not marked with a headstone and after 10 years, a body could be removed to make room for others. So knowing if Mozart is still where everyone thought he was may be a big problem. In 1859, a memorial monument was placed near the spot where Mozart was thought to be buried. Later, this monument was moved to an area in Vienna's Central Cemetery celebrating the famous composers, alongside monuments of Beethoven, Schubert, Brahms, and others. The burial site at St. Mark's Cemetery has a monument which includes a marker, a symbolic broken column, and an angel, replacing earlier markers on the assumed original burial site. So whichever of the cemeteries with Mozart graves you choose to visit in Vienna, Mozart is definitely not in one, and he may not be at the other one either. Jimmy Hoffa he was the former head of the incredibly powerful and corrupt Teamsters Union when he disappeared on July 30th, 1975. He started with the Teamsters in 1932 and built his career on being no holds barred confrontational. It earned him the love of union members and working folks and the hatred of some politicians and corporations. He was also flirting with disaster for most of his career. His close connection to the Mafia gave him a lot of power, but also meant he owed a lot of debts to some very powerful people. Huff had been sent to prison on a 13-year sentence for jury tampering, bribery, conspiracy, and both wire and mail fraud in 1967. In 1971, he worked out a deal that got him released on the condition that he resign as union president. Believe it or not, he would still head the union despite being in jail and stay out of the union activities until 1980. He tried to have that part of the deal overturned once it got out and it said he was planning to take over the union once again when he disappeared. Few facts of his disappearance are known. He went to meet two known mobsters at the Red Fox restaurant in Detroit, Michigan. He called his wife when the meeting time came and went, telling her he was coming home. 
he never made it. Despite investigations and rewards, he has never been found. He was legally declared dead in 1982, seven years after he disappeared. Theories on what happened to him, and all theories presume he was killed by the mob, are like a list of mob movie death plots. For years, people thought Hoffa was buried under home plate or in section 107 of the old giant stadium in New York. This one, we can say, is false because they didn't find him when the old stadium was demolished. Another theory, he was killed, cut up, and dumped into a Florida swamp. It has been said he was thrown out of a plane over the Great Lakes, buried in concrete under a barn, or in a bridge pillar, or under a hotel parking lot. There have been lots of theories. And searches are ongoing. The only thing that can be said for certain about the death of Jimmy Hoffa is there is, as of today, no body and no grave and no confirmation of cement overshoes. Alexander the Great. He was the king of Macedonia. The Greeks thought he was a god. And he did too. When he died in June 323 BC, at just 32 years old, his body did not start to decompose for six full days, confirming his divinity to all. Many historians now believe Alexander may not have been dead for those six days at all, and that the great tomb he was buried in is gone. He was born in 356 BC. His father was King Philip II of Macedon. His teacher was Aristotle. His mother believed he was the descendant of gods, and was born for greatness. He was. He grew up on the battlefield learning military strategy and a desire to conquer the Persian Empire from his father. When his father was assassinated in 336 BC, Alexander inherited a powerful and volatile kingdom. He was 20 years old. He quickly united the people and consolidated the power of Macedonia, and then began his conquest of Persia. By the time Alexander was 25, he was king of Persia, having conquered Asia Minor, Syria, and Egypt. He had never been defeated in battle. He established Greek culture and language while assimilating the best of the cultures he conquered, creating an empire of diversity with roots of trade unknown before his time. Between the ages of 25 and 32, he would increase the empire to cover three continents. He founded more than 70 cities, and he particularly fell in love with Egypt, where he claimed the title of Pharaoh and built the city of Alexandria. But he didn't settle there. Alexander's life was war. In 323 BC, Alexander was in Babylon, readying troops for their next battle, when he became ill. Apparently, after several days of debauchery, including heavy drinking, Alexander had a fever he couldn't shake. He also had chills, sweats, exhaustion, and by some accounts, severe abdominal pain. This lasted for almost two weeks, and in the last few days of his life, it is said Alexander could not speak. He died on June 10th. Through the last five centuries, theories about what may have killed him have ranged from alcohol poisoning strychnine, malaria, all the way to typhoid. None of these explains why his body did not start to decompose for at least six days. Recent theories say he may have had Guillain-Barre syndrome and that he was not dead yet when the six-day countdown to decomposition began. This would put the actual date of his death into question and, if true, make Alexander lucky they decided to take his body back to Egypt and not to bury it immediately. His body was returned to Egypt and was originally buried at Memphis. Later, he was moved to a tomb in his beloved city of Alexandria, where it was visited over the years by Julius Caesar and Cleopatra, among others. There are reports that his tomb was plundered several times, with pharaohs taking burial goods from it. Supposedly, Caligula took Alexander's breastplate. Despite being a treasure trove, it seems that by the 4th century AD, the burial place of Alexander was lost. Over 100 official searches have been made trying to locate the tomb of Alexander the Great. 
This search continues to this day. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.